Hi, greetings, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and today I want to talk about something very, very important today. I want to talk about cultural intelligence and whether or not you want to be an organizational leader, team leader, uh, human resource manager, or uh, just an excellent employee. This is a topic that can help take you from where you are to where you want to be. And there's proof and research that really shows this to be true. So I want to talk today about what specifically you need to know about cultural intelligence. So with uh, research, we really have begun to understand that uh, people in this world truly need cultural intelligence uh, in order to uh, keep their organizations uh, to be successful. And you have to ask yourself, what's the difference between individuals and organizations that succeed in today's globalized multicultural world and those that fail? I want to talk about some essential myths. Just because you have international experience, it does not necessarily mean that you're culturally intelligent. Just because you have technical expertise, it does not mean that you are guaranteed to be successful. We all know people that are in that spot. How about high EQ? We know that high EQ really is a key factor in uh, success, but it does not guarantee that you have high CQ or cultural intelligence. So what exactly is cultural intelligence? Cultural intelligence is the capability to function effectively across various cultural contexts like national, ethnic, organizational, generational, etc. So, the good news is that no matter where you are today, you can take your emotional and cultural intelligence to new levels with uh, excellent plans of action. If you have low CQ, you react to external stimuli. If you have moderate CQ, you recognize cultural norms and begin to accommodate for them. But if you have high CQ, you can adapt and adjust your thinking and behaviors as needed. And that's what makes uh, cultural intelligence such a really cool model. Because uh, you, you have a baseline that can be measured and then uh, you could develop a, a plan of action to bring it from wherever it is to bring it high and then practice doing things that keep it high. Some results of high CQ uh, essentially are cross-cultural adjustment, personal well-being, greater profitability for your organization, and greater job performance. And these really are things that are needed for, for each of us and our organizations as a whole in order to keep it competitive. When you are happy, you tend to be more productive. Uh, when you're happy and you can adjust better in uh, intercultural situations, the people around you are more comfortable. And so better word of mouth, better publicity, uh, better trusting relationships leads to uh, greater successes for you and your organization. In our own cultures, we usually have an idea of what's going on around us because we have a uh, wealth of information, most of which is really subconscious. That helps us make sense of what we experience and observe. When we interact with individuals who have a different cultural background, the same cues may mean something entirely different. The CQ model is made up of four capabilities, and we'll go through each of them in the subdimensions here in this video. The first capability, CQ drive and motivation. Uh, this is your interest drive and confidence in adapting to uh, multicultural situations. The second is CQ knowledge or cognition, which is your understanding of how cultures are similar and how they're different. The third is CQ strategy or metacognition, which is your awareness and ability to plan for multicultural interactions. And fourth and finally, CQ action is your uh, 
behavioral CQ. And this is your ability to adapt when related and working interculturally. So CQ really is your level of interest, drive, motivation to adapt uh, interculturally. CQ drive reveals how you feel about an intercultural scenario. CQ drive uh, really predicts your capability to persevere when stress and disorientation occurs in an inter intercultural situation. This means taking the time to identify what cultural scenarios are most frustrating and developing strategies for regulating the frustration and stress that often ensue. As you think about enhancing or applying your CQ drive, begin with a positive intake then calculate the opportunity, the cost of adapting, and then not adapting. So when you're developing a CQ drive, connect it with your existing interests. Look at opportunities in different cultural contexts and have lunch with someone from a different cultural background. So intrinsic interest is deriving enjoyment from culturally diverse experiences. One way to improve or leverage your intrinsic interest is to write down three ways you can gain more enjoyment from your intercultural interactions and work. Think specifically about how to connect with existing interests and an, an intercultural component like if you love sports, how you can learn more about a new culture through sports, for instance. And you can enjoy uh, design thinking, look for implications on designing thinking during an upcoming intercultural encounter. Intrinsic or extrinsic interests is gaining benefits from culturally diverse experiences you can improve. Uh, your interest by making a list of specific types of opportunities that exist for you and your organization in different cultural contexts. Self-efficacy. This is having the confidence to be effective in culturally diverse situations. Try having lunch once a month with someone who is from a different cultural background to develop your confidence. Get to know each other and compare notes on how your perspectives are similar and how they're different. Arrange a vis to visit a novel cultural event with this person and do your best to learn from him or her. CQ knowledge. Begin with understanding your own cultural values. Identify reliable information sources from learning cultural information. CQ knowledge is your level of understanding about how cultures are both similar and different. Individuals with high CQ knowledge have a rich, well-organized understanding of culture and how it affects the way people think and behave. They possess a repertoire of knowledge concerning how cultures are alike and different. They understand how culture shapes behavior. CQ knowledge, uh, your understanding of cultural differences, CQ knowledge predicts your cultural knowledge and self-directed learning in the midst of an intercultural engagement. As you think about enhancing or applying your CQ knowledge, begin with understanding your own cultures, identify reliable sources of information for learning cultural information. Let's talk about strategies to develop your CQ knowledge. You could read country profiles in the BBC News website. You can learn more about cultural values uh, orientations uh, by avoiding idioms and you also understand leadership differences and similarities across cultures. So with business cultural systems this is your knowledge about the ways cultures develop systems for things such as economics, legal governance, family, and so forth. One way to prove, improve your uh, understanding of cultural systems is to do something like reading country 
uh, profiles in the BBC News website before you travel to or host individuals from a country that you're unfamiliar with. Values and norms. This is your knowledge about values, social interaction norms, and religious beliefs. The cultural value ratings included uh, when you take a CQ assessment are an ideal way for you to understand cultural values. One way to use your understanding of cultural values is to look up the orientation of the cultures in which you, you most work with. Sociolinguistics is your knowledge about rules of languages and rules for expressing nonverbal behaviors, developing your competency in social linguistics by identifying idioms that you use frequently in your communication, like that's a game changer, or that put a real spinner in the works. Write down alternative ways of communicating the same message that avoid idioms like which are misunderstood across cultures. So for leadership, this is a context uh, specific subdimension and it, uh, it's about your knowledge about managing people and relationships across cultures. The time you, you read an article from a leadership magazine, identify any material that suggests an ethnocentric value toward a particular culture, like assuming that all employees want to be empowered or given freedom to speak up. And this will help you develop a better understanding of the differences and similarities of leadership across cultures. So with CQ strategy, uh, you've got to think about a way to develop if-then strategies to anticipate multiple ways to address a reoccurring intercultural uh, dilemma. Find a cultural coach to help you make sense of culturally unfamiliar situations. So CQ strategy really is the degree in which you are mindful, aware, and able to plan for multicultural interactions. Individuals with ICQ strategy use cultural understanding to develop plans for new intercultural situations. They monitor, analyze, and adjust their behaviors in ways that fit different cultural settings. They are conscious of what they need to know about an unfamiliar culture. So CQ strategy is how you plan for and interpret an intercultural encounter. CQ strategy predicts the degree to which you will accurately anticipate and make sense of what's going on. As you think about enhancing or applying your CQ strategy, develop if-then strategies to anticipate multiple ways to address a reoccurring intercultural dilemma and find a cultural coach, as I've mentioned, to help you make sense of culturally unfamiliar situations. So some strategies to develop CQ. Uh, prepare a brief plan before you meet with someone. Take implicit bias tests. Uh, you can find that at uh, projectimplicit.org, that's projectimplicit.org, and then work with a cultural coach. So the planning subdimension means that strategizing before a culturally diverse encounter. One thing you can do to develop uh, the way you plan is to prepare a brief plan before you meet with someone from a different cultural background. Consider what you might uh, what might be different about your multicultural encounter as compared to if you were meeting someone uh, from a familiar cultural background. Awareness is where what's going on in the midst of an intercultural situation. One way to build your awareness is by taking some of the implicit bias tests at projectimplicit.org that I mentioned. Take three tests, reflect on the experience, and find someone that you can discuss that with. 
And then checking is reviewing what happened in adjusting mental maps when actual experiences differ from expectations. Improve your checking by working with a cultural coach to help you determine uh, whether a difference you encountered was a result of culture or personality. CQ action. Uh, consider whether it is tight or a loose culture. Determine your objective uh, and this will uh, help you adapt or not adapt better in accomplishing your, your objective. So CQ action is the degree to which you can appropriately change your verbal and nonverbal actions as well as your speech by drawing upon a broad repertoire of behaviors and skills. Individuals with high CQ action draw upon the other three CQ capabilities to translate their motivation, understanding, and strategic thinking into action. They use a broad range of behaviors which elect to fit specific context. They know when to adapt and when not to adapt. CQ action is how you actually behave when you're in an intercultural situation. CQ action predicts the degree to which you will appropriately adapt while not over adapting to or compromising yourself or the organization you represent. As you think about enhancing or applying your CQ action, consider whether it's a tight or a loose culture. Tight cultures a highly value ascribing to a, a consistent set of social norms, whereas loose cultures welcome uh, deviating from norms as long as doing so doesn't infringe on the rights of others. So determine your objective and will adapt or not adapting be better in accomplishing your objective. Strategies to develop CQ action. Adapt words based upon different cultural orientations. Talk with your colleagues about what verbal behaviors are most frustrating. Practice using a nonverbal behavior that is uncomfortable for you. So, speech acts. This is about modifying the manner and content of communication, like being direct or indirect to fit the cultural context. An example of a strategy for developing speech acts is to list three different ways to tell a colleague that a deadline is firm. Your goal is to be clear while also adapting the words based upon different cultural dimensions. Share your list with someone else and then ask for feedback. Verbal. This means adapting verbal behaviors like the language, Accent, tone, pace. At one of your upcoming team meetings, ask everyone to talk about what verbal behaviors are most annoying to them when having a professional conversation with someone from a different culture, like speaking too fast or too slow, uh, being formal or informal, and, and then note which of these verbal behaviors might apply to you, and then try to change your behavior. Nonverbal means adapting nonverbal behaviors like gestures, facial expressions, and even the way you dress. Choose a nonverbal behavior that is appropriate uh, but uncomfortable for you, like looking or not looking someone in the eye. Greeting someone with an embrace, standing closer to or farther apart from someone else. And get a group. Uh, get your group of colleagues together and practice using uh, these awkward and uncomfortable behaviors with each other. Repeat those things until you feel more comfortable. So uh, I really encourage you to develop a CQ plan. Uh, do this by reflecting on your challenges and opportunities, strengths, and areas for performance. All four CQ capabilities are relevant to effective intercultural performance, but research suggests that the characteristics of a person's role and specific context influence the, the four abilities which are uh, important uh, to yourself. The, the CQ and performance outcomes 
uh, really research really shows that uh, it really is important for people to focus on these uh, across the company and be able to gain more education uh, no matter what type of, of organizations that you have. Remember, there's CQ Drive, CQ Knowledge, CQ Strategy, and CQ Action. And in these, uh, you need to be able to learn to cross-culturally adapt, uh, have better judgment and decision making, be able to more effectively negotiate, have strategic leadership, and then be able to uh, expand, understand what it would take to expand into new markets. So the characteristics of a high quality goal are specific, measurable, and have a specific targeted timeline for accomplishment. A high quality goal should be difficult, but not too difficult. And the following are examples of effective and ineffective goals. So, goals for leveraging CQ strengths. Develop goals for leveraging your highest CQ capabilities. For example, uh, if your drive extrinsic in interest ratings are high, develop goals that build your extrinsic interest. Ineffective goal, share business opportunities for expanding in India with colleagues. Uh, this is an ineffective goal because it's too vague and there's no timeline. Here's an example of an effective goal for building your strength uh, in extrinsic interest. Identify an opportunity for your organization in India. Research the size of the market and the competition and calculate the impact of effectively penetrating this market. Report on your findings to uh, your team by the end of January. Goals for areas that need improvement. Develop goals for improving your lowest CQ capabilities. For example, if your CQ strategy planning rating is low, develop goals that work on improving the way you plan. Ineffective goal. Spend more time planning before meeting the clients from different cultural backgrounds. This is an ineffective goal because it's too vague and then there's no timeline. Here's an example of an effective goal for improving the way you plan. For the next two weeks, outline a brief plan for things to remember that may be different whether you have a meeting with someone from a different cultural background. After the meeting, reflect on what happened and decide if your plan was effective or if you could modify your approach in the next meeting with this person. Be sure to avoid goals that are too vague, too simple, difficult, or have no timeline. Set goals for two CQ capabilities you want to focus on most. Note which sub-dimensions within those capabilities need the most attention. Write high quality goals for the first CQ capability uh, to be accomplished in the next month. Accountability is essential for implementing a CQ development plan. Identify one person like a colleague or friend with whom you'll discuss your action plan with during the next week and ask this person to help you keep focused on your goals. Mark your calendar for regular contact with this person like in a meeting, a phone call, Skype or whatever uh, to review your progress and brainstorm about what is working versus what is not working. So it really is important to remember that 90% of leading executives from 68 countries said finding effective cross-cultural personnel is a top management challenge. Research proves everyone can improve their cultural intelligence. You just have to have the right tools. So. Uh, with this in mind, I hope that you have found something that you could use in your life today or uh, in your future that helps you gain a competitive edge and helps you develop more meaningful intercultural relationships. I really appreciate your time and more than anything else, I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr.